All right, so workout number one, we're here at the trail, Hill Patioke here in Stewart, Florida. I'm getting ready for a 150 mile ruck walk, but before we do that, you have to train for it. I'm gonna go over the entire process back at home once we get done with this in between training sessions. I got three training sessions today. This is the first workout. So we're gonna do five and a half miles. I'm gonna try to stay between 12 and 13 minute per mile pace. So what I usually do is intervals. This is a medium intensity day. I got 45 pounds dry in the ruck along with you know my waters and things like that. The goal is to maintain a speed, get the entire distance done at a particular duration of time, making sure that I'm pushing myself but not overly doing it. The goal for this one is to get the paces higher, faster, but also not kill myself in the process. We wanna make sure that we're pushing ourselves to a point to where you can increase your abilities. Now, in the 150 mile ruck walk, I'm putting myself in a position to where, yes, it's gonna hurt no matter what, it's 150 miles with 50 pounds or so on my back for multiple days. But that's the goal, right? The goal is to push yourself beyond your limitations at competition day. While you're training, however, you wanna consistently progress. The reason why we're doing 150 miles, multiple reasons, I'm looking to inspire people to get up and move, right? If I can do 150 miles, you can go ahead and do 30 minutes in the gym. Another reason, good friend of mine, Eddie Gallagher, Navy SEAL veteran, we're working towards bringing funds to his new foundation, the Pipe Hitter Foundation. You can check it out down there in the link below. But we're gonna raise funds as we go to walk this 150 miles, going from Miami to Fort Pierce, Florida, and ending up at the Navy SEAL Museum in Fort Pierce, Florida on Memorial Day. So for all my vets out there, for all my military active duty members, this one's for you. Let's keep it moving. So just a little bit over three miles down, finished that last mile at about 12, 11. So making good time. Again, I'm gonna keep on with the two minutes at roughly 10 minute per mile pace. And then I'm gonna go ahead and walk for a minute right now. We got about 10 seconds left at about 17 minute per mile pace. Time to go. Workout number two, we got Muay Thai. All right, so I'm gonna do some bag work drills, some jump rope, nice and loose. Uh, this one's not gonna be a hard training session. Obviously we, we did the five and a half. We're gonna go ahead and do some light work here. And then tonight we're gonna go ahead and do some weight training. But again, I just wanna move around. I'm not getting ready for anything, but I still wanna stay active and still wanna stay sharp. So 
Let's hit the bag a little bit. All right, so workout number two, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and throw 35 grams of carbs from Dextrose in here. Battle tested, if you guys haven't checked it out, go ahead. It's my post-workout, but really it's more of an intra workout for me, or in between workouts, I should say, um, to replenish fueling, especially for longer duration workouts or anything that's going to be taxing on the muscle. If I'm depleting glycogen, I have to refuel it, so we're gonna utilize this. All right, so let's go over the Muay Thai workout for the day over at King's Muay Thai. Three minute rounds of jump rope. Now this is the heavy jump rope, so taxing on the shoulders for sure. Definitely different. Uh, you're not gonna be able to go speed on this, but good to work the shoulders. Good for, for me just to get more tissue temperature, increase tissue temperature, increase the heart rate a little bit there too as well. And just to bounce around, get ready for the work ahead. After the two three minute rounds, I did two three minute rounds of shadow boxing in the ring, just moving around, more about picking my shots and, and just feeling loose, making sure that I put some combinations together, moving my feet in the right direction. Obviously, you wanna make sure when you're, when you're doing any type of shadow boxing, you're making believe that you have somebody in front of you. So don't just throw punches just to throw them, don't throw kicks just to throw them. Make sure that you're placing them as if there was an opponent in front of you. After that, I did 200 push kicks on the bag. That's 100 each leg. With the push kicks, really working the hip flexors. You're also working the hamstrings. You're working the quads. You're basically working your entire leg and, and your hips. This is, uh, this is good to do for placement too as well. So I'm trying to focus on my foot being placed on the bag at the same spot every time now it's not always going to be there and the other thing that you want to make sure that you're not doing is you're not rolling the bag or spinning the bag as you go to push so we're trying to hit it right in the same spot every time for those 200 reps after that tie knees or muay thai knees clinch knees on the bag again 200 reps that's 100 each leg with this one i'm trying to make sure that i have a, I have a tendency to to dorsiflex my foot um i think that's basically probably because of the running mechanics but you're supposed to point the toe to help with just sharpening up the knee as you go to strike, it makes it harder. So focusing on that, plantar flexing my foot and driving my knee into that same position. Now, the other thing that you wanna make sure that you're doing is bouncing off the ground and getting full hip extension before you go to throw the knee into the bag. So I'm being, being very cautious of that too as well. After that, three three minute rounds of bag work. The first three minute round is gonna be solely upper body strikes. So working the jab, the cross, hooks, elbows, and just working on placement, a little bit of power. And then at the last 10 to 20 seconds, I'm just rapid fire doing one twos nonstop on the bag just to blow out my lungs. The second round of the three minute rounds is all about lower body strikes. So spinning back kicks, teep kicks, some oblique kicks in there too as well, just for fun. Uh, just really working on turning my kicks over. That's one thing that I need to focus on is rotating my hip through, rotating, internally rotating my hip through so that I get a better strike on the bag and just on your opponent when you're going to throw your kicks. Another thing, if I'm going high on the kick, I need to make sure that I'm up on the ball of my foot and not being flat footed when I go to rotate. Then after that, the last round, putting it all together, Punches, kicks, elbows, knees, all encompassing, freestyling, um, having some fun, but also putting some work in. Thank you. Feel good. It's Wednesday, but you know how weeks are, it's long. So, but otherwise, um, I'm feeling good. I still got power. I'm recovering well. This is the uh, second session, so we got one more to go. I got some calls I got to make today, this morning, and pick up my son from school, so. Everything's looking good, feeling good. Like I said, these days are heavily um, catered or focused towards my own training. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I'm coaching nonstop, running the business, um, traveling, things of that nature. So these days, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I really get to turn up. Again, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I'm still running, but, uh, but yeah, so. I make these days count. These are these are important days for me. This show. All right, guys. So now we are going to do the weight training portion 
of today's workouts. So started off with ankle circles, just getting range of motion in the ankles. Start to go from the ankles, knees, hips, and then all the way up the kinetic chain. So working that support system, going from ankle circles to heel toe walks, just making sure I'm getting good dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, good range of motion in my ankles so that when I go to squat, deadlift, when I go to run, or do any type of gait pattern or lunge pattern, I have the optimal range of motion to get into the position. Then from there, same thing, heel walks, then into toe walks, just getting into those end ranges and then putting force on those end ranges. After that, went into the hips, did some hip circles, and then also some hip airplanes to get internal external rotation. Working our way into the glute bridge, single leg glute bridge to get hip extension, get some glute activation. Then from there, went to kettlebell hip shifts, working into the glute medius and the oblique and adductors. So just firing up the hips, firing up the adductors, working a hinge pattern in that same sequence. Then right from there, kettlebell swings. I don't spend a whole lot of time on this. Every one of these is just gonna be one set through so that I can get right into the work. Now, today's workout is consisted of functional hypertrophy, meaning we're gonna do sets and reps at a good amount of volume, but not too much to where it becomes more muscular endurance work. We're trying to build some hypertrophy, but also build some strength. So the rep ranges have to dictate that. With that being said, the RIR, the reps in reserve, is gonna be a one or a two reps in the tank. So basically meaning you're gonna go to near failure, but you're still gonna leave some in there. So again, with the squat variation, the hinge variation, the single leg variation, and the carry and pull, we're gonna push ourselves to the edge, but not go overboard, just like we did today in the ruck. First one, I did block pulls for a hinge variation. So barbell block pulls, did this on a four inch block. I did three working sets of six reps total with an RIR of one to two, working my way up. Again, the volume is gonna be predicated on the work that we're trying to accomplish or the stimulus adaptation that we're trying to acquire. From there, I went into a squat variation, belt squat. I like the belt squat because again, puts the load on the hips, doesn't really put too much axial load on the spine. It's not compressing my spine because I just did the ruck this morning. So four by six there as well with an RIR of one to two. Going into single leg movements with an RFE split squat, driving the knee over the toe, really working on more of that acceleration phase of a gait pattern, three by six each each leg. So again, same tempo. We're gonna go nice and controlled on the eccentric and explode up. The reps and reserve is gonna be a two. Then finally, went outside and did the carry and pull variation, which is the farmer's sled drags. So we had two kettlebells at 80 pounds, equal out to 190 in my, in my hands. And then the sled overall was around 200 pounds. Did five rounds at 50 yards to finish off the day. Full day of training done. You guys saw the ruck, you saw the Muay Thai training, finished up with the weight room, finished up with a hard sled drag slash farmer's carry. Something I like to do, um, especially on lower body days and full body days, but I'll finish the full body day usually with another five mile ruck. But since we did it this morning, just basically checked all the boxes off. So. There it is, guys. If you like this video, you like a vlog style video, you wanna see me put in also my, my daily eating habits, my nutrition, and how I'm getting ready for Ruck 150, and just my training overall, my coaching, all of that. Go ahead, let me know, hit the comments down below. If you wanna see a full coaching vlog where I'm doing my thing and working in my business, we can, uh, we can make that happen too as well. Just let me know down below, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification. You know what? Go ahead, stand up. I got you. Oh, here we go. I might do a car. Yeah, move this out of the way. Whoa.